This is part two of the function of the machine parts. Um, we are going to start with number five, the light switch. And the light switch is in two different places um, depending on the machine. So on the smaller machine, this machine here, the light switch is right here and just works like that. Okay, so the light switch turns the light on and off. On the bigger machine, this one here, the light switch is over here on the right hand side and this machine either has to be in this position for the machine to run or all the way with the light on. So if you'd rather not have the light on and you're at this machine, um, in order for the machine to operate it needs to be there or with the light on. Okay, If it's in the down position here, the machine won't run. That's just a safety um, piece that they put on that machine. <clears throat> so light switch turns the light on and off. Um, we've got number 15, the needle position regulator. Okay, and that's located right here, this line in the middle of it. On this machine, it is this piece right here in the middle. Okay, the needle position regulator moves the needle left and right. And we always want that line pointed straight up and down on that one. And then that piece pointed straight up and down on this. Okay, right here. So it moves the needle left and right. As I move it, if you watch my needle, okay, it'll move either direction. And we want it always lined up straight with that presser foot. You can see on the presser foot, there's this groove right here. And the needle should line up with that groove if it's centered. Okay, if it's not centered, then it would be off and your sewing would be off. So you always want to make sure it's straight in the middle. Um, number 16, the buttonhole dial. Creates a buttonhole. That's the function. So when um, people are creating clothing, they can use that to obviously create a buttonhole depending on the size and everything. Um, the buttonhole dial is only on this bigger machine and then on a couple of the smaller Berninas. But it is this one marked with an X and we don't ever touch it. We don't need to worry about it. It's something that if we mess with it and this dot is somewhere else along this setting here, then it's going to create some issues for us for our sewing. So we just aren't going to ever touch it. Don't need to worry about it. Um, but it does create a buttonhole um, when used. All right, number 17, the stitch length regulator. This sets the length of your stitch, so how long your stitches are. Okay, and you can see that that's marked with an L on all the machines. So for this machine, if I wanted it set at a one, I would turn the little dial so that this line right here is set at a one. Okay, same thing if I wanted it set at a four. All right, so that's that one. Uh, this machine is a little different. You can see inside right here, there's a little white line, and that's what I want matching up in order to set the number. So if I wanted it at a one, I would have that white line set at a one. If I wanted it at a four, then I would twist the dial so that the line was at a four. You need to make sure that when you twist it, down to the four, you don't go past the four and continue twisting because then it will release this whole piece from the machine and it's kind of difficult to get back into the machine. So um, we will never have it on a zero, never, never, um, either machine, because what that means is that your stitches are literally on top of each other and your machine's not moving. Okay, we want some length in our stitches. So it will never be at a zero, okay? You can see here a zero means that the stitches are on top of each other, a one means they're spread out a little bit, a two a little bit more spread out, three even more, and then four they're pretty long and loose stitches. Okay, For you guys, you will most likely be using a one or a two, Okay, or somewhere in between those two when you're sewing your actual projects. 
All right, so we also have the stitch width regulator. So that regulates or sets the width of the stitch. So how wide the stitches are. Okay, so we've got that marked with a W and then you turn it and mark, match the white line with whatever you're wanting. So if I want a one and a half, okay, it's there. If I want a four, it's all the way here. And then again, on the bigger machine, it's the outside part here. Okay, and if I wanted it at a two, if I wanted it at a four, this machine has a five, but we'll probably never use the five. Okay, four would be as big as we want to go wide. So that sets it on the outside. Okay, so stitch width regulator sets how wide the stitch is. And then again, you can see that a zero is a straight stitch. A one, there's a little bit of a zigzag too. A two is a little more zigzag. Three more, and then four is a pretty wide zigzag. Okay, you guys for your projects again would probably use like a two or a three. Okay, sometimes a four, but mostly two and three. Um, okay, our last couple spots we have are the bobbin winder spindle. Okay, and that is right here. So this is where you would place your bobbin when you are winding it, and winding it means that you're putting thread on it. Okay, so bobbin winder spindle holds a bobbin while you wind it. So your bobbin would go right here. Okay, then we have number seven, the winder pretension, which is this little piece here. Okay, and that sets the tension of the thread while you wind the bobbin. So sets the tension of the thread while you wind the bobbin. Number seven, pretension. And that concludes part two.